Frosthaven is hands down the most anticipated game of 2021. And we're very excited to showcase the six new starting characters for you to utilize. Each character has its own backstory, special abilities, and new powers. Today, we reveal the inner workings of who they are, where they come from, and a glimpse of how to maximize their skills in Frosthaven. Let's begin with Esther Necromancer. These were once humans whose tragedy scattered their psyche across the infinite planes, and once they had gotten themselves back together, acquired some sinister abilities. These necromancers utilized the power of summoning to raise an army of zombies and skeletons to do their bidding. In fact, because they only have six health to start with, they're going to need a staff of minions to keep them alive. Esters are going to be hanging around in the back with their 12 card hand, supporting the others up front. They need to spam as many skeletons as possible, even though it costs some health. They need to avoid taking damage because without health, they can't summon their bony buddies and can get into some trouble pretty quick. This class needs to heal regularly, but oddly, their cards are really situation specific in this regard. Also, they don't have a lot of early initiative cards, and because they tend to act either midway or late in the turn, you're going to have to plan ahead with these guys. Most of your cards require you to be in a specific spot, have a skeleton, or a specific element in the environment. It's been pointed out that this class might really be tough to play in a two-player game. Even if the other player takes a tank with someone with a lot of healing ability, it's going to be challenging, at least until you get your summons going. This class is just too fragile. Also, because the Necromancer ends their turn late, they may be in a vulnerable position for creatures with early initiative. Items may be vital here to stay alive. That aside, this character class should prove to be fun to play, and if playing with a large group of allies, could grow to be quite powerful as it gains items and health. Let's shift to the second new character, Quattro Blinkblade. They are small, they are smart, they are driven, their bodies are augmented with strange machinery called Temporal Drives, and they seem to be a fascinating class to play. The Quattro Initiative cards have two sides, fast and slow. The Temporal Drives, they allow you to manipulate time. The fast actions are always better, and have earlier initiative, but each time you use them, one of up to two counters is removed from the card. When you're at a counters, you have to use the slow action, although this allows you to replace the aforementioned counters. So this allows you to take powerful fast actions in short bursts, and then suboptimal actions in order to recover and recharge. It seems complicated, but I think once you get used to the flow of this kind of character, it all boils down to timing. Take the fast action when you can, and find some slow actions that you could live with while your temporal drive recovers. This class is likely best suited for a Gloomhaven vet who is looking for another layer of tactical decision making and shouldn't be played by someone just getting used to the series. Up next is the Inox Drifter. These are strong and imposing creatures which became scattered when their tribes were destroyed by the human expansion across the Gloomhaven world. Some of them chose to cooperate with human society and others chose to resist. Generally, they are only out for themselves though. This is going to be a character that seems very tied to the basics of the game. They move, they attack, they heal. Period. The play options of the Drifter are quite straightforward and easy to break down. Perfect for a beginning player to work through. That said, there are some very neat abilities the Inox Drifter brings to the table. The Drifter has six persistent ability cards that help with improving movement, attacking, healing, shielding, and retaliating. Not only that, but they have 10 actions that will actually move the character counters back on one or more of your persistent abilities. This effectively allows you to customize the character as you play, as you can alter their strengths as you go along. You can support a few different abilities, but not all of them, as you will get exhausted pretty quick. Overall, the Inox Drifter seeming simple from first glance is literally bursting with possibility and is more than capable of going in any direction that you wish to take it. Next up is the Human Banner Spear. Knights tend to be a standard yet popular class in this kind of game. 
The Banner Spear are warriors from the capital city of White Oak in search of glory and honor. The Banner Spear class is one of the tanks of Frosthaven. In addition, they have a neat ability of summon banners, which are stationary as allies. Then, in combination with these initiative cards, they can pull off some really powerful attacks provided that they are in position relative to those banners. If you've played League of Legends, this class kind of reminds me of Alawi, whose unmoving tentacles, once they're set up, kind of create a deadly kill zone. Some of these might be tricky to do, but with enough banners down, there should be a pretty good area of attack. Another aspect of customization is that you can add a permanent status of Shield 1 in exchange for reduced range on your range attacks. Now that's a tank. Put the Human Banner Spear in front to soak up the damage and protect the rest. This class is going to be a little bit tough to coordinate and will give you some brain burn, but will potentially be fascinating to play. The next class is Valrath Deathwalker. The Valrath Deathwalkers are not really suited for Frosthaven as they come from the deserts down south. They've made peace with the humans and now live to help the souls of the dead stay dead. The Deathwalker is weak like the Necromancer with only 6 health and has an 11 card hand, but they have an intriguing ability. They can make use of ghosts known as shadows, which are placed on the board and yet don't occupy the space they're in. Like true phantoms, enemies and friends just pass right through. These shadows help you boost the levels of things like your attack, and also can allow you to avoid damage by teleporting to a space where a shadow is instead. You're going to need to stay in the back until you get your shadow network set up on the board, which can be a bit difficult as there's only one of the starting cards that allows you to place them. It's going to take some time, but once you're ready, this class can be quite powerful indeed. Finally, the last starting class is the Harrower Geminate. This is not a single being so much as a swarm of thousands of insects that developed a hive mind. When they interact, they tend to take on human form so they don't freak anyone out. The only problem is that not everyone is of the same page here. In fact, this single character has two different personalities. At any given time, either the left or the right side is going to be in control. And you don't really have a choice as to when. There's a little symbol at the bottom of each of the card that tells you which side is in control. Each side is very distinct. For example, the left side is more melee focused and the right side is more ranged attacks. The character class starts with 14 cards. This seems great until you do realize that this means each side only has 7. You'd better make sure that you wear each side down evenly. You don't want to be exhausted on the left and still have a ton of cards on the right. This is going to be a chaotic class to play, especially as you may have a card that is perfect for a current situation, only to have your mind change on you. But this class has some powerful attacks, and as such, that will keep it very interesting. Its decent health of 8 will allow this class to take a little damage early, but not too much. You definitely want the tanks working for you. And there's another interesting ability where you can use up a waning element and make it into whatever element you like, which can come in very useful. So this class will be challenging and will take a lot of strategy to use as well. If you can pull off an epic move with all this going on, I'm sure this class will be particularly satisfying. Final thoughts. There's a lot to like and be excited about with these six new characters coming in Frosthaven. I love that they range in abilities, archetype, and power sets. You've got to marvel at the next level of creativity that Isaac has put into many of these as well. Not just simply recycling the old ideas from Gloom. It will be absolutely intriguing to see how well they translate onto the Frosthaven board. If this was helpful to you or of interest, or you want to see more Frosthaven content, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks for watching. This has been Legendary Tactics.